Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Finally I'm outside again and today I found this really cool spot where we have some awesome yellow-tailed black cockatoos feeding in really low sort of spiky bushes and I'm hopeful that I will be able to creep up to some of them and get some awesome shots. I'm going to use my R5 100 to 500 handheld. I'm just going to try to walk around, stalk some birds and at the moment it's still a little bit sunny which is not ideal because there's a lot of sunny areas, shadowy areas but at the same time there's already some clouds rolling in there might even be some rain so we might have a real mix back of weather might need to use some really high ISO but I'm hopeful that we're going to get some awesome shots so let's go guys can you believe it I only walked a couple steps and I flushed this southern boo-boo and it landed right over there right in front of me on a nice open branch I took a few shots with the 100 to 500 with no extenders and now I'll put the two times extender on to get a nice and tight shot of it. Using ISO 12800 because I have to be at f14 and I try to not shoot under 400 of a second. So this is working quite well. The worst thing about this lens is probably that I can't zoom any further back with the two times extender on so that's a bit annoying but it actually seems to give me some decent results when I zoom into the images. So I'll just jumped a little bit higher back in the tree I can't see it anymore so I took the two times extender back off I'm hearing some cockatoos calling right behind me so I'm just going to go 100 to 500 with no extenders and see if I can find them and hopefully get some shots let's go hope you can see them over there it's a nice male yellow tail by cockatoo. It's using the 1.4 extender, doing a little movie while we're at it, and off he goes. Another nice male, He's doing a quick movie. He jumps up a bit higher, that would look epic. Wow, all in all a pretty cool day. Got a bit of sun, rain, clouds. The birds are right in front of me now down somewhere in these bushes. Sometimes they poke the head through and I can get another shot. I'm shooting wide open now, ISO 16,000, 250th of a second. So I also took some shots with a two times extender, 1.4 extender because the birds were always in varying distances. So I'm actually really interested to see back home on the computer how these images turn out. I tried to get some more shots, but I think the days pretty much over so let's head back to the computer and see how the files turn out. Back at the computer it actually took me much longer to go through all the files than I thought because I ended up taking over 4,000 images and there was a lot of birds and a lot of cool scenes so that was one reason to have so many images but the other reason was that when I was getting to those darker stages the low light when I was photographing the owl or later on with the cockatoos and I had to use high ISO and low shutter speeds I simply just shoot away, take a lot of images and hope that a few of them will be sharp and usually in a row of maybe 10, 20 images there will be a few that are really sharp and a few that are not so sharp simply because of the camera shake or the bird moving. So I think that's one thing to remember. If there's low shutter speed, high ISO, just shoot away, burst away and hopefully get some sharp images. So why don't we start looking at some of the images that I took and the first one is this southern boo book. At first from the angle where I was standing I couldn't really get a clean shot and I was like oh that's such a good scene it sits on an open branch and so I started to walk around and eventually I managed to climb up the hill a little bit and actually managed to find a little window with a nice little bit sunlit background behind the owl. The light was a bit tricky because there was a bit of 
sun coming from behind the owl is kind of shooting almost into the light but with a little bit of editing you can see that we can make this owl look amazing when you look at the data you wouldn't think that's even possible it's wide open f14 100 to 500 with the two times extender iso 12800 but it actually cleans up to this amazing looking image pretty cool isn't it and if you want to know all about image editing and how to edit your images from a decent raw file to an amazing looking final image even in tricky conditions like this make sure to check out my master class down there in the description let's move on to another set of images that is pretty cool because i just want to show you how moving around especially on a hill can dramatically change your background so here we have a pair of yellow-tailed black cockatoos this time iso 10,000 with the 100 to 500 we can see in the rain still getting decent sharpness but look what happens when we can move around we can dramatically change our background moving around a bit higher we get more trees in the background or i'm going down lower and i get a much nicer much cleaner background i think this is a very good example where you thinking about the background like i did with the owl or like i did in this example can really improve your images. I was quite amazed with the results that I was getting in really low light at really high ISO, even with the extenders. So this first example is a stunning looking male yellow tailed black cockatoo just eating one of these hakia fruits. And when we zoom in to that, we can see that it might not be the sharpest image you've ever seen in your life, but considering the conditions, I think this is a very acceptable result. I really like this scene of this female yellowtail black cockatoo sitting in the rain in this kind of like heathland background. And this was taken at ISO 12,800 at 700 millimeters now. And again, still nice and sharp considering the conditions. And then I like the rain in this shot. So I actually went, walked around a little bit more to get a darker background to actually showcase the rain a bit more. Which image do you like better? Do you like the brighter background better where it looks a little bit nicer overall for my personal taste? Or do you like the darker background where you can see all the rain? But what impressed me the most about these two images is that you can actually shoot the 100 to 500 with the 1.4 extender at 12,800 ISO wide open at F10 and you get a completely usable result like that. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Here's another quite impressive example. This is taken at ISO 12,800 F10 wide open at 700 millimeters, so 100 to 500 with the 1.4 extender. And if we look at this, this is taken at a large distance in heavy rain. And even with all the rain, I'm still getting a reasonable result that once I run it through noise reduction, it will definitely be a great usable image. This was the other thing I was a little bit worried about using the 100 to 500 in the rain with the zoom coming in and out, but that was also not a problem. I didn't hold back and I zoom in and out with water on the lens and that was not a problem at all. So that was actually quite impressive as well to see that it actually seems to be pretty well sealed. Let's move on to maybe the most impressive series of images from the whole day. And this image was actually taken at ISO 16,000 f7.1 at 250th of a second. It was after sunset. So when we zoom into this, we can see, again, it's maybe not the sharpest image you've ever seen, but considering the conditions and looking at this final image now, this has cleaned up very well, hasn't it? I think this is also a good reminder that just because we're shooting in dark conditions at high ISO, our images don't have to look dark and noisy at all. If we know the right editing process and do the right steps in the editing process, we can make almost any image look absolutely amazing, even one that was taken in dark conditions and high ISO. If you want to learn how to do that, make sure to check out my master clouds down there in the description. One thing that stands out to me when using the 100 to 500 millimeter RF lens on the R5 is how well and fast and accurate it autofocuses. It actually works better than my 600 millimeter version 2 EF prime lens. And the camera and lens even work well with the extenders when it comes to autofocusing. So you can shoot wide open at F14 in dark conditions and still have amazing autofocus and tracking. And that's a real game changer to me and makes this lens so versatile. And that's also the reason why I would have to say at the moment, that's probably my favorite lens simply because it's so flexible. I can use it 
For handheld video, I can use it with the extenders, without the extenders, go wherever I want and have the lens with me. So I'm very happy with that lens at the moment. And now at the end, I wanna show you the favorite image from the day where everything came together. Stunning bird doing a great pose on a great perch with a great background and I was able to position myself in the right spot. So you can see the image here, that's the raw file after raw converting it with my own raw profile in camera raw. And then here you can see the final edited version. Pretty cool, isn't it? I grabbed a 100 to 500 and because the birds were a bit further away, I wanted a nice smooth background. I also grabbed a two times extender. And considering the conditions, that was a bit of a gamble and I was using the electronic shutter and just firing away like crazy at f14 wide open eyes or 6400 400 of a second not every shot was good but i was actually able to get some pretty nice shots just like that one the main thing that stands out to me about the combo of the 100 to 500 and the r5 in the field after using it now for maybe like eight months is that it has allowed me to take images throughout that time that i was simply not able to take previously. In the past, I was usually using a big 600 millimeter primer. So I've used 100 to 400 before, but I always felt like the 100 to 400 was a little bit too short. With now, the 100 to 500 seems to be a perfect compromise for me in the field. I'm actually using it more now than my 600 millimeter prime lens because it gives me ultimate flexibility. I can do a handheld video with it. I can use it with both extenders and still get reasonable image quality. So it's the perfect all rounder, perfect walk around lens, and you can actually handhold it for a long period of time as well, which is very helpful. So I'm very happy with this lens. And I know the main question is always, what about it being open at f7.1 and shooting in dark conditions? And I think today, at least I could show you that if you know how to shoot in these conditions, use the right technique and use the right editing technique that you're definitely able to take images even at f10 or at f14 at high ISO in these dark conditions. So I think all in all, this was quite a test. I'm quite happy with the results. What a day getting two species and two fantastic images of both of these species and then another few hundred images that I haven't even really looked through. I just prepared a nice selection for you and edited a few files so you can see a few before and afters. But all in all, a fantastic day. And what did you think? What did you think about the photos? And what do you think about the performance of the 100 to 500 millimeter lens in the field, especially with the extenders in these really dark conditions? Let me know in the comments. Also make sure to give me a thumbs up for the video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.